some fun DIYs and a Buffalo check slash Buffalo plaid tutorial all starting right now. If we haven't met, my name is Lisa and this is our gray house. Our first DIY for today's video is going to be a springtime wire cloche. I'm taking this Dollar Tree charger plate and giving it a coat of Rust-Oleum's chalk ultramat paint in the color charcoal. I found these styrofoam bunnies at Dollar Tree and I'm using three for this project. I put each bunny on a skewer so I can give it two coats of folk art paint in the color barely pink. And you'll see on the right that I had started to paint the charger with some stripes. I abandoned that idea and while I was thinking about what I wanted to do, I started working on removing the hanging chain and trying to snip off the little bits that were hanging over. It's kind of hard to explain this, but you, you see what I'm doing right there. And so as it turns out, <laughs> my little snipper thing, it doesn't cut wire like that. So I had to take it out to my garage and I used a hacksaw to remove those pieces. And obviously I decided to paint the rim of the charger white and now I'm adding hot glue so that I can glue down some reindeer moss to the middle section of the charger plate. And hey, I was thinking if you haven't subscribed to my channel and hit the bell for notifications, now would be a good time to do that so that YouTube will let you know every time I share something new. And Captain is curious. <laughs> I'm using three wood slices that I got from Hobby Lobby as part of the centerpiece. They come in a pack and I've told y'all before, if you're buying these, make sure to go to the his and hers section, which is the wedding section, because they are on sale there every other week for 50% off and are cheaper than buying them in the wood pile section. And also, I'm trying to go in and fill in the spots that need more moss. This stuff is super messy, y'all, but it looks really pretty, so I'm just, I'm just going with it. Even after all of my gluing, there are spots that I miss, so I go back in with some more hot glue and more moss to fill in those. And I take two more wood slices and where there's a hole in the top and center of that wireframe thing, I'm going to glue one wood slice to one side and then glue the other wood slice to the other side. Kind of like making a wood slice sandwich. And now I'm just positioning the three bunnies on top of those three wood slices in the center of the charger plate. And I'm adding hot glue as needed to keep things secure. The final touch is to hot glue on a small wooden knob. And this is how it turned out. It's so beautiful. Instead of bunnies, you could put a candle or maybe some birds or a small pile of Easter eggs. Lots of different ways that you can customize this and make this to your own taste. But I just love it. This video is part of a playlist and the hosts are Crafty Cove, The Rusted Willow, Six Kids and a Glue Gun, and the Spotlight Crafter is Farm Charm Chic. The links to their channels and the playlists will be in the description box below for DIY number two. We're gonna take this fall sign that I got from Dollar Tree. They sell similar size signs throughout the year, so you should be able to find one. I'm just gonna remove the twine and staples as we're not gonna use this as a hanging sign. I'm giving the back side of this sign, which will now be the front, a generous coat of folk art paint in the color Adirondack. Oh, I can't say that. Adirondack. There. <laughs> I had this metal flower container from Dollar Tree in my stash, and I'm giving it a coat of Rust-Oleum's chalked ultramat paint in the color linen. I 
I do like to distress some of my projects and I'm using the terror this cut um, <laughs> I like to distress some of my projects and I'm using territorial beige to give this piece some character and all you have to do is take a chippy brush which is just a coarse bristled brush they have them at Dollar Tree dip the brush into some paint wipe a little bit of it off and so you aren't left with much paint actually on the brush and then lightly go over the areas you want to add distressing to. I try to build up the color, but if you're too heavy handed like I am sometimes, you can always go back with your original color to kind of lighten it up. I added some territorial beige to the sign as well. And in hindsight, I kind of wish I'd done the distressing like up and down. Um, although I guess it really doesn't matter and you can always go back in I could always go back in and paint over it and redo the distressing, but I mean, I think it looks fine Y'all know I try to share with y'all other options for creating things if you don't have a Cricut because I know not everyone does So you could trace these letters freehand them or use stickers I got these alphabet stickers at Dollar Tree and I'm using them to add the word welcome to the sign. And look at me, I mean, I even busted out the ruler to try to get them straight. Um, these are not so sticky that you can't get them back up and I don't know how they would like weather outside. So I would recommend sealing it if you plan on putting it outdoors. If y'all remember, and as you can see, the back of the sign has glitter on it, and it's also a fall sign. So I like to try and finish out my projects as much as possible. So I'm gonna cover this with some brown craft paper that I got from Dollar Tree. And as you can also see, it didn't lay down perfectly smooth, and that's okay. Really, no one's gonna see it, but I do like to cover up the back when I can. I added some green floral foam that I got from Dollar Tree to the container, and I'm gonna put the sign in the back. I am using hot glue, but the sign is really making it top heavy. So it needs some either like weight inside the container to bounce it out, or maybe leaning it against something when you're displaying it. I don't know, whichever works best for you. And then it's just time to add some florals and I am not a floral designer so I just add them until it's full and I like how it looks and I got these florals from the Dollar Tree and this is how this cute little piece turned out I'm gonna put this on a small side table in the corner of our porch and I think it turned out great Quick plug for my crafting group that I run with Sarah from JGB DIY on Facebook. The link, of course, will be in the description box below. All right, DIY number three is my favorite one from today. I'm taking this um, salt and sand. This is a, yeah, it says salt and sand sign from Dollar Tree. And I was originally going to cover the back with brown craft paper because y'all know I am not about that glitter life. I then um, tried to peel off the paper instead and it worked fine but it worked even better when I applied a wet cloth to the area and then just kind of scrubbed off the paper. Once I had that completed I flipped it over and made sure the surface was smooth. I then take folk art paint in the color at a round deck and painted the whole background with it. So since I'm going for a spring look for this I'm using three colors. I'm using white, pink, and gray as the colors for my buffalo check. The next step is to lay down your painter's tape. And depending on the size and shape of your sign, that'll determine where you start taping. I always try to pick a center point and kind of work outward. And I found the vertical center, laid down my first piece of tape. I then take a small piece of tape and use that as my spacer. I lay it next to the larger piece I just laid down. And then I lay down another longer piece of tape. I pick up the spacer, move it to the next side and repeat the process. You kind of see what I'm doing. Before you start painting, you do want to make sure that all your painter's tape is pushed down really well. To paint on the next color, in my case pink, you can use a brush or even a makeup sponge or like a sponge brush. I'm using a paintbrush and I'm painting on the color and trying to make sure it is an even coat of paint. Once 
Once that is dry, you remove the tape. And I keep the tape because I'm gonna need it in just a moment. So make sure it's fully dry before you add the horizontal stripes. And again, I work from the middle out and I add a piece of tape, add a spacer, and we're basically just repeating the process from before, but in the opposite direction. And here's a little tip that I learned from Whiskey and Wit. She suggested that you go in and mark where the other lines are so you know where to put the other tape back on. So in this case, I'm adding some lines and putting an X where the white paint is. I then paint another coat of the pink paint and let it fully dry. After it is dry, you are not going to remove that tape, but you're going to add that vertical tape from before back on. Of course, you could use fresh tape, but I always just save mine and I just reapply it. And you're going to use those lines and those X marks to know where to apply this tape. Then take your third color, and in my case it's gray, and paint over the squares that don't have tape on them. After I do that, I go ahead and peel off the tape. I do let it dry for like a few seconds, but really not that long at all. And to finish this off, I take some wire leaf garland and make a circle for a wreath. I have help. <laughs> I also paint a wood bunny cutout that I got from Dollar Tree. I didn't notice that Captain had moved the camera, so you don't actually see what I'm doing, but trust me, that's, that's what's happening. I go around the bunny with a fine tip white paint pen and add some dots and dashes to help the bunny stand out. I attached the wreath to the sign and added the bunny to the middle. I also added the twine back in at the top so I can attach it to my grapevine wreath on my front door. And y'all, look how beautiful this turned out. I absolutely love it. The buffalo check takes a small amount of time, but turns out so great and it's totally worth it. I'll share some different color variations in some upcoming videos, so stay tuned. Thanks so, so much for joining me today. I think that the three crafts that I shared turned out so beautiful. And don't forget, if you're a crafter, tag Our Gray House and your pics on Instagram. I'd love to see what you're creating. And if you want to follow me here on YouTube or over on Instagram, it's Our Gray House. But just don't follow me in real life, though, because that's creepy. Bye!